Hi, my name is Rob Denton and I'm a PhD student at The Ohio State University. I'm fascinated by amphibians, and this amphibian that I'm holding is especially unique. This is a unisexual salamander, meaning it's part of a group of all female salamanders that only give rise to female offspring. What makes this animal truly unique is that it's also a sexual thief. It can steal sperm from males of other salamander species and incorporate that in their offspring as well. Usually when two species can share genetic information, the result are inviable or sterile offspring. But these animals have been breeding successfully this way for almost six million years. How is that possible? How can an animal be sexual and asexual at the same time? Let's start by explaining how the transfer of DNA works normally in most sexual animals. Here we have a female and male spotted salamander that are interested in one another. When they mate, each partner contributes one copy of their DNA to the offspring. All of their babies will have two copies of DNA, one from their mother and one from their father. This is how you inherit some traits from your maternal side and some from your paternal side, a mixing of genetic material. So let's see what makes unisexual salamanders so strange. First of all, remember that there are no males, so let's get him out of here. Secondly, unisexual salamanders usually have more copies of DNA than other sexual species. In this case, three copies, where two are the same and one is different. Normally, these animals reproduce by cloning their own DNA and contributing it all to their offspring. The results are offspring that are all female and all the same genetically as their mother. But cloning isn't so strange. In fact, there are examples of organisms that clone themselves to reproduce across all of biodiversity, from crayfish to geckos. But the cloning isn't what makes these animals so special. Occasionally, a unisexual salamander will mate with the male of another species. In this case, we have the much larger tiger salamander. The male contributes a single copy of its DNA, and the female clones its DNA like it usually would. When we examine the resulting offspring, we can get a mixed bag of genetic material. Some can be the clone of their mother, some a combination of all of their mother's DNA and the male's DNA, or even some of the male's DNA can swap for some of the female's DNA. Because these salamanders can steal genetic material from multiple other species, this mating system has the potential to create a wide amount of genetic diversity everywhere from two to five copies of DNA from up to five other species. So why is this so important? The answer is that this system is the only one of its kind and could teach us a great deal about how DNA can be managed efficiently. But first, we would like to know if these salamanders gain any advantage by reproducing this way. These animals occur across a wide range of the eastern United States and Canada and are generally very successful, but we don't really know why they're so successful. Here in a place like Crawford County, Ohio, the ponds where they live and breed in during the spring are separated by large areas of agricultural land. These fields are very difficult for salamanders to get across without drying out. What I'd like to know is if because of their unique way of combining the genetic material from other species, these unisexual super salamanders are better equipped to handle this harsh terrain. Take a visit to my Sci-Fun page to learn more about these animals and for how myself and others are going to test some of these ideas, including salamanders on treadmills. That's right, salamanders on salamander-sized treadmills.